hi, hello and welcome, my Crow Hunter here and today's video is going to be a little bit uh, more philosophical in nature because I would like to explore the concept of, now hear me out, <laughs> the concept of individuality uh, in the microscopic world but not only. And uh, because this uh, topic can become a little bit abstract, I want to start off with an example. Here you see a dividing cell. It's a ciliate, a water, a single-celled water microorganism, and uh, it's dividing and it is now in the process of reproducing, forming two cells. So the DNA of the cell has already been copied uh, and now the cell is about to undergo or is already in the process of cell division. And I'm asking myself now, and I'm also asking you, how many cells do you see? Is this one cell um, or are they already two cells which are only connected together? I mean, they do behave as one entity. I mean, they do move together just as if they were one cell. But actually, um, you could already say that uh, they have already started to form two individual cells. And so you see there is a little bit of a gray zone and the line of what it means to be an individual entity, an individual organ is a little bit blurry and this is what I would like uh, to explore today. Well, but uh, I also observed something else which was quite interesting because after a couple of minutes um, the dividing ciliate stopped moving. Um, it stopped and uh, all of a sudden it started uh, to collapse again uh, onto itself. So the membrane between the two cells disappeared. The cell started to shrink and then a little bit to my surprise the cell even popped open, spilled the contents of the cell so maybe you've just seen this happen right now it spilled the contents of the cells and the cell died um, so it's kind of interesting um, yeah there were two cells initially uh, which were held together and then they died as one cell and this again is uh, one of those uh, cases where I'm kind of wondering what does it actually mean to be an individual here and how can we f explore the line or find the line between um, uh, individual um, and uh, what it means uh, to be a separate uh, um, uh, unique organism. Um, however, we do not even have to look under the microscope, um, even on the uh, yeah, macroscopic world, in, we see similar cases. This here is a starfish, um, and when you flip it around, you can see those hundreds, if not thousands, of tiny little legs moving around. Um, and uh, those starfish have a remarkable ability to regenerate. And uh, if you, for example, were to take one starfish and cut it in half, then um, both of these halves are going to grow back their missing arms, and then you'll have two starfish. Um, and uh, here again, we have the same question. I mean, how many starfish do I have right now here in my hand? It, it, actually, it's one. But if I were to cut it in half, uh, what do I have then? Do I then have two? And uh, essentially, uh, if I were to now take this starfish and uh, dry it in the sun, essentially killing it this way, um, then of course I've uh, killed one animal. But if I were to cut it in half first and then dry the two halves separately, have I then killed two animals? Animals, because as a, as a matter of fact, both of these uh, halves would be able um, to survive on their own. So you see here again, we have a little bit of a question of what it means uh, to be an individual unique organism. Um, and in nature, you can find many of these examples. Uh, but let's go back uh, under the microscope. Um, this long uh, horizontal filament that you see here, that's uh, these cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria are uh, photosynthetic bacteria, so they produce quite a bit of oxygen. And if you look carefully, you're going to see that uh, these cyanobacteria actually move uh, almost uh, like a worm back and forth to the left and to the right. However, um, this filament is actually composed um, of uh, many, many individual cyan cyanobacterial cells. And these cells are actually um, you know, separate, um, unique organisms because bacteria are single celled organisms and if I were to now cut this filament apart into several parts then of course they will also continue to grow and to live so what we have here is an interesting case of where we have a, yeah, a complex arrangement actually not even such a complex arrangement rather a fairly simple arrangement um, of cyanobacterial cells behave as if they were one organism
and uh, essentially cyanobacteria in this case can already be seen um, as a first indicator of a multicellularity and very very basic and simple multicellularity um, is demonstrated here you hear a little bit under higher magnification as well um, the individual cells are a little bit difficult to discern um, but those cyanobacterial filaments they move uh, uh, horizontally and vertically um, almost as if they were unique individual organisms but in reality they are composed of uh, smaller um, smaller cells as well yeah and then again uh, another example here uh, Staleria this worm is called it's uh, a freshwater worm um, and its characteristics because it has this long thin trunk uh, shaped head um, and uh, it's fairly large it's a millimeter or two millimeters in length even possibly even longer and as I observed uh, the uh, worm under the microscope of course I could see the digestive system um, working you could some, sometimes you can even look into the worm itself and you can see a little bit of um, what it has eaten you can see how also the food is moving along in, in the worm um, on the outside you can see the the hair the bristles that it uses uh, to move forward and uh, so we can see that this worm is already quite a bit more complex than the cyanobacteria that we've just observed but it too has a remarkable ability to reproduce and regenerate asexually I have to add and this basically means that this worm is able to split in half um, and then the two halves are able to survive on their own and then basically the process uh, continues um, and uh, you, we can actually also see the place where um, a new head is growing um, just in a second I'm going to show you so maybe you can see over here the small little extension in the body um, so maybe I have to pause the video here to show it to you um, yeah, and this uh, little uh, extension here, that is a new trunk uh, of a head forming and then um, it's going to grow and grow and grow and then uh, sooner or later the worm is going to separate and then you have two uh, separate worms and here again um, I'm kind of I'm asking uh, myself um, yeah where is the individual worm here and if two worms are connected to each other um, do we then have two individuals and from one point onwards can we actually say that we have um, a new unique worm um, and here again the line is quite blurred especially also here because because the two worms are genetically the same so there is not even a genetic uniqueness here because we're uh, observing here asexual reproduction and an asexual reproduction is no new mixing of DNA um, and uh, the offspring uh, basically directly is able to grow out of one parent uh, organism so I would like to now know is, uh, who is actually the parent is it the worm that is splitting off uh, from the main worm or could you not also say that the, that the front part of the worm is uh, the Worm which is formed by the back part you see it's all a question of perspective um, and uh, perception I would like to give you a second worm example here uh, more slightly uh, different looking worm here Iolosoma is the name of this one also a freshwater worm the red dots in the head these are oil globules um, and that's actually one of the characteristics of the worm and this worm too um, is able to regenerate quite well so in other words if you uh, cut it apart in two halves then the part with the head is going to form its uh, new tail again but it too is able to split apart uh, by forming in the middle of the worm a new head and uh, here we're actually able to see this so maybe in the lower third you're able to see that there's this bulge um, in the worm um, and this is uh, the new head and uh, currently uh, the whole worm sim still acts as one unique individual but actually we see that there's a second one also already forming and maybe here I'm going to pause the video again um, so that you're able to see it a little bit better um, so I'm going to point to it yep so here is the arrow here this is basically the new head which is forming and then when it's uh, reached uh, an appropriate size then the worm is going to split in half and we have a second uh, a worm here again I would like to ask uh, where uh, over here is the line uh, between the parent uh, and the offspring and uh, what does it mean to be an individual here um, as well and of course um, I think uh, that uh, one of the big issues here is, is that we are using a term the term individuality uh, which is a very human term um, for also for other 
animals. And I think that this is uh, then a case where there are some problems uh, emerging because when we talk about human individuality, we do not only mean genetic identity um, or essentially our own ability to act uh, in the world, but we also imply that humans have a mind uh, and also a form of self-awareness and consciousness. And all of these things are, are part of uh, the larger concept of individuality uh, that we have. And uh, for this reason, I think one has to be a little bit careful to apply these human terms uh, to other uh, to other animals uh, and or, and organisms as well. Yeah. In any case, uh, I think uh, uh, I wanted to make it clear a little bit that uh, sometimes in nature uh, the lines are a little bit blurred, and sometimes organisms and nature in general does not like to be put into boxes, and there are gray zones and gradients everywhere, and sometimes things are a question of uh, perspective as well. And with that, I'm going to leave you. Please do leave your own comments behind in the comments section. But uh, for today, that's all I would like to share with you. Happy microbe hunting as always, and see you around next time. Bye-bye.